Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Shane Lucas Daniel, and today in this video we'll be covering a chess that comes in game I played recently, uh, so I was playing the black pieces, and let's take a look at what happened. So my opponent opens with e4, uh, c5, here uh, knight, knight c3, knight c6, so we go into a closed Sicilian, with the move f4 here, generally this is more aggressive um, by white as well, white's committed their f-pawn and their e-pawn and somewhat exposed their king already, so they're trying to launch some type of an attack. So you have player d6, knight f3, knight f6, very standard. I go for my dragon type setup. Here, d3, g6, castles, bishop g2, takes, takes, uh, queen e1. Idea is to go queen to g3, and you'll see white's pawn structure is already facing towards the king side. So basically, white wants to try to engage in some type of an attack on the king side. Castles e5, I jump my knight into this nice square on d5 that's now been vacated after the move e5 has played because e4 used to cover the square, however now with the pawn on e5 the square is now vacated. Uh, knight d4, here I play knight to b5. My idea is to now target the c2 pawn and also I have some pressure here in the center on this knight on e4 and at some point I can even consider capturing. So here queen to uh, f2 and here I play this very nice move c4 undermining sort of the defense of this knight uh, from this e3 pawn. Basically, if you take with this pawn, then I can play bishop captures on e4. And now I also have two attackers on the c2 pawn. This pawn is also weak. I can also capture here. And most importantly, I'm, up, I'm also up a knight. And additionally, if you don't take, then I still have some, I still have a lot of pressure here on this d3 point. Here my opponent plays a3, which is actually a mistake because this allows c captures on d3, the secondary idea. Here, if you capture this knight, which my opponent did, then I can play bishop captures on e4, because after capturing this d3 pawn, this knight is no longer defended. And alternatively, if you capture here in the center, then after knight captures on d3, and you play something like queen to e2 to defend this knight, then here I can simply play d captures on e5, and this queen now defends this knight here on d3, and this knight here stands really strongly, and if you play something like rook e1 to target this knight, then I can play queen b6 check, attacking the king, um, and then my knight can move next. If you play bishop to e3, then I can simply play um, something like knight captures on f4, counterattacking the queen. If you take here, then I can take with check, and after the king moves, then I can just simply capture the bishop. And also here you can't take this knight because there's a pin here of the bishop to the queen, and I'm also still attacking the queen on e2. So going back, instead here my opponent uh, captures the knights, and here I capture my opponent's knight, and pawn takes, and bishop takes. And here, rook d, d1 was played. Here, the best move is to play bishop to e4. However, I thought after something like this, this pawn on d6 is a bit weak. I guess I can play the move d5 and support it with the bishop. However, I thought after something like knight g5 or knight e2 to target this bishop, I didn't really like that too much. So instead, I opted to play uh, after bishop e4 and knight to g5. Here, I opted to play bishop back to uh, c3. So here, after pawn takes on uh, d3, I played bishop captures on d3. However, the best continuation would actually be, uh, be played bishop captures on f3. And then afterwards, you can play after queen takes and pawn takes, pawn takes and bishop takes. Uh, this I also saw in the game. However, I didn't like it after queen captures on b2 for some reason. Uh, I, there, there is queen captures on d3. However, after queen captures on e, e7, I thought that like maybe something looked a little bit like there's a lot of pressure here basically with this bishop can also come in and this rook can maybe swing to a6 and target some pawns. So I thought this was a little bit suspicious for um, for uh, black. However, here actually the computer just says after rook a to e8, this is completely winning because uh, you can't actually capture this a7 pawn because I have bishop to d4 check, forking the queen as well as the king. So you have to play queen to b7, uh, at which point here I can play the very nice move bishop captures on h2, king captures on h2 and uh, here I can actually play queen captures on f1. Okay, so this this is sort of what the computer is suggesting. I had missed this in the game. So instead, I went for the alternative option here of bishop captures on d3. And here after rook to d1, bishop e4, and knight g5 and bishop e6, uh, bishop c6, sorry. And then here my opponent plays e6. The idea is if you take, then after knight takes, then you're forking the rook and the queen. So here I obviously don't take. I play the move f6 here, uh, kicking the knight away. And then, once, and then once the knight moves away, this pawn on e6 is very weak. So my opponent jumps into f7 here, trying to clamp down uh, on this sort of idea here with the e6 move and also getting the outpost on f7. Here I just simply play queen b6, trade off the most important pieces, the queens. 
Bishop e3, my opponent understands that a queen trade would favor me a lot. So uh, declines this with the move bishop e3, counterattacking the queen. Here I play queen captures on b4, uh, queen to a4. Uh, maybe there's some threat here at some point, but not currently. Um, this knight doesn't actually attack h7 right now, so uh, I don't have too much to worry about. So queen captures on b2. Now I'm actually threatening checkmate in one, supported by the bishop on c6. Here queen to h3. And here I play queen e2, setting up a nice tactic. Let's say you play a random move like rook b1. I have bishop captures on g2 here, and if you play queen takes knight, I can play queen captures on d3, followed by queen captures on e6, and then you would end up losing this knight as it is trapped on f7. So here my opponent plays rook to d2, uh, and here I find this very nice move bishop captures on g2. Uh, this attacks the queen, so if you play rook takes, then I simply play bishop takes, and I'm attacking this pawn, and even if you defend it, then I can still play bishop captures on e6, and after rook takes and king captures on f7, uh, I'm completely winning here because I'm simply up too many pawns. White only has two pawns, whereas I have uh, seven of my eight pawns still. And so I'm up five pawns here, and this is easily winning. Uh, and also after bishop captures on g2, and something like queen captures on g2, uh, I can place queen capture on e3, and then same thing, capture e6, and capture the knight on f7. So what happens after queen to g3? This is what my opponent played in the game. So now it looks like my bishop's still under attack, my queen's still under attack, and this bishop's also defended. But here I have one move, and this is the only move that I actually end up playing, which is the move queen to c4. The idea here is that if you play queen captures on g2, let's say, then I can play queen captures on e6, and this knight being on f7 uh, is always trapped. So I'm always able to win back the piece that I just gave away on g2. Like let's say queen captures on b7, here I can simply play, or here I can actually play queen captures on e3 first, and then I can bring my queen back at some point. Um, and I guess that's like the third purpose of uh, queen captures on e6 is it attacks this bishop. So once this bishop is defended, uh, so here after a queen to c4, my opponent plays knight captures on d6 first, uh, getting a pawn for their troubles. Here I can simply capture on e6, which I did. And after bishop captures on a7, I play rook takes, finding this other nice tactic because after rook takes, which my opponent did in the game, here I have queen e1 check. And the only move that white has is queen f1, which undefends this rook on d2. And so now I'm here simply up uh, a bishop as well as, uh, so, yeah, I'm simply here up a bishop as well as a couple of pawns. Here rook captures on b2, I play queen to d4 check. Uh, my opponent doesn't want to trade queens but is forced into it because after king to h1, which my opponent played, here I play queen to d4 check, forking the uh, king as well as the rook here. So I have queen to g2 is forced basically to protect this rook. And here after I trade queens, I would just simply play rook d8. I can escort this pawn to become another queen. And this, in this, even in this stage, this is a very simple win. Here my opponent, since we were low on time, thought maybe trying to sneak in a final pre-move like rook to d7. Because if I pre-move this, like uh, pushing the pawn all the way, then maybe there's a chance here you can take this rook. Sort of like a dirty trick. But here I didn't pre-move anything, so after rook captures on d7, now there is really no hope because now white is down a rook as well as a bishop. So very nice clean win, uh, starting off early with the uh, nice tactical find of c4 here, undermining the defense of this knight. And then once my knight is attacked, not moving this knight, not thinking very passively and thinking, oh, my knight's under attack, so I'm going to have to move it, thinking very aggressively and um, doing something else, not moving this knight. And that's actually, in fact, the only good move. All the other moves are like equal-ish. This is the only move that gives black a plus, near plus two advantage after pawn takes, because simply undermining the structure here um, basically just gives away the advantage for white. Uh, so yeah, hope you all enjoyed this game. Uh, has some nice tactical flair as well as later on, um, as well as in this position uh, with some position understanding of the opening as well. And so hope you all enjoyed this game and thanks for watching.